So a while back, I had the opportunity to contribute to a, a blog with a pretty good sized international audience and they wanted some information on Des Moines, Iowa. And I was able to share uh, my thoughts on Des Moines, Iowa, my home. I've had the opportunity to travel uh, around the world, been pretty blessed as far as that goes, but there is the old adage, there's no place like home. And that's how I feel about Des Moines, Iowa. So I figured I would take that blog, that content, and turn it into a video as well. When someone hears the word Iowa, cornfields, barns, and potatoes come to mind. Even for those who live within the continental United States, even those who live within the Midwest. And while Iowa does have its share of corn, not really potatoes, that's Idaho. The many cities in Iowa, and Des Moines in particular, are thriving metropolitan areas with a lot to see and do. And while Des Moines is booming, the people who live there still have found a way to hold on to the traditional charm and way of life that have drawn people to the Midwest and to Iowa for decades. But otherwise, here are 10 things to know before you visit Des Moines, Iowa. Number one, it's not pronounced like it looks. So before we really get started, let us make sure we're all on the same page with how you actually say the name. Basically, the S's are silent. There are a lot of people who pronounce it Des Moines, but it actually sounds more like Des Moines. It isn't even abnormal to hear a national newscast where you hear the news anchor pronounce it Des Moines. But you know what? Iowans don't get too upset about that kind of thing. Our mama's race is better than that. Number two, Iowa is way more than just cornfields. Yes, it might be true that 90% of Iowa's land is used for agriculture. It may also be true that no other country in the world produces as much corn as the United States. And no other state produces more corn than Iowa. However, Iowa is far from being a cornfield. Sure, Iowa might not have something like uh, the floating house I stayed in in the Florida Keys. And it might not be as adventurous as a trip off the coast of Australia at Fraser Island. But there are so many cool things, and they aren't even corn related at all. Des Moines has a beautiful city skyline, complete with its very own high rise buildings, many of which were designed by award winning architects. Additionally, the Iowa State Capitol is located in Des Moines. Made from 23 karat gold, the building's Golden Dome is one of the largest gilded domes in the United States. Trendy lofts, restaurants, hip stores, such as yoga studios and t-shirt shops, make up the popular East Village area of downtown Des Moines. Modern shopping centers like Jordan Creek in West Des Moines provide additional opportunities for shopping and eating. And if you're visiting in the summer, catch an Iowa Cubs ball game at one of the nicest minor league ballpark facilities in the entire nation. If you're around in the fall, be sure to check out the Iowa-Iowa State football rivalry game. There's definitely more than corn growing here. Although there are rude people located everywhere, there just seems to be fewer of them in Des Moines. Be prepared to have someone open the door for you. Even if he or she arrived at that door 30 seconds before you did. and get used to hearing phrases like please and thank you and you're welcome, sometimes on an overdone basis. On a related note, don't be offended if someone calls you ma'am while you're leaving their store. Even if you don't think you're old enough to be a ma'am, it's just a habit for some. Also, if you find yourself in a rare traffic jam, don't be surprised if somebody actually falls back, gives you some space, and waves you over. 
As someone who travels a lot, that doesn't always happen other places. Number four, don't be confused if you hear someone ask for a pop. Depending on what part of the US you live in or you're raised in, you may ask for some liquid refreshment in a different way. Some call them soft drinks. Those in the South call them a Coke, even if it's a Pepsi. Others might order a soda or a cola. And in the UK, you might even hear them called fizzy drinks. Well, in Des Moines, we like to drink an ice cold pop. And pop isn't the only word that might cause some confusion if you're not from Des Moines. You know those little streams of water that some people call creeks? Well, in Iowa, those are cricks. We go hiking by the creek. Also, ragbri is not a word from a foreign language. It is a week-long bike ride that spans from the east border and the west border. Be sure to check it out if you're visiting sometime near the end of July. These are just a few examples of the words you might hear when you're in Iowa or the Midwest that aren't maybe so typical of someplace else. Of course, if you're confused, you can always ask an Iowan to help you out. Iowans are usually pretty happy to do so. Number five, some of the best pizza in the entire world comes from a gas station. You heard right. Casey's General Store is an Iowa-born gas station chain that is spreading across the Midwest. Casey's is widely known for its great pizza. From classics like pepperoni or Italian sausage to one of their specialties, taco pizza, Casey's just does pizza right. It's strange, I know. And we have a lot of other great pizza places in the Des Moines area. But with over 2,000 locations, you're more than likely to be within a five to 10 minute drive to go pick up a delicious Casey's pizza, unless you would rather have it delivered. Number six, the Iowa State Fair. The Iowa State Fair is located in Des Moines. It's one of the world's largest livestock shows. It's one of the state's largest art shows. And perhaps more importantly, it has more food than any other state fair. You can get pretty much anything you could ever think of fried and on a stick. Big name musical artists make appearances in a little bit more intimate environment. And a lot of other artists perform on the free stages. The Iowa State Fair was also mentioned in the New York Times bestseller, 1,000 Places to See Before You Die. I'll put a link to that book down below too. So whether you come for the uncountable types of food on sticks, the concerts, the livestock shows, the amusement park like Midway, or the old fashioned giant yellow slide, you will not be bored. You can catch the Iowa State Fair if you're visiting Iowa sometime in mid-August. Number seven, the Des Moines area just breeds superheroes and Olympic gold medalists. Superman, he grew up about 10 minutes south of Des Moines. Aquaman, same place. Brandon Routh from Superman Returns and Jason Momoa from Aquaman both grew up in Norwalk, Iowa. Jason frequently visits some of Des Moines' finest eating establishments when he's back in town. The Waveland Cafe and Tasty Tacos. It's almost a guarantee that he's gonna visit one of those two places, if not both, whenever he's in town. So who knows? You might run into the Game of Thrones star when you're grabbing some breakfast. And while Superman and Aquaman get their superpowers from the magic of Hollywood, Des Moines is a training ground for world-class elite athletes. Two smaller girls with superpowers of their own come to mind. Chow's Gymnastics, located in West Des Moines, helped produce 2008 gold medal winner Sean Johnson and 2012 gold medal winner Gabby Douglas. Not a bad resume for a humble gym in the middle of Iowa. Number eight is the downtown farmer's market. Every Saturday from the beginning of May through the end of October, the skyscraper dominated downtown Des Moines is transformed into the, one of the best farmer's markets in the nation. In fact, the Daily Mail named the Des Moines farmer's market the number two farmer's market in America. Who is named number one? Who even knows? The Des Moines Downtown Farmer's Market is number one in my book. It's been in existence since 1975. That's even older than I am. It supports 300 local entrepreneurs, farmers, bankers, artists, and it's where you can find fresh grown fruits and vegetables, handcrafted pieces of decor, beautiful photos and paintings, and killer breakfast burritos. They're like this big. The surrounding skyscrapers and historic city buildings tell you that you're in a metropolitan area, but the vendors and offerings 
remind you that you're in an agricultural state. You're gonna have a blast there, I promise. Number nine is beggar's night. Most people have heard of Halloween. Not a lot of people have heard of Beggar's Night. Beggar's Night is celebrated near Halloween in Des Moines. Beggar's Night consists of children dressing up in different costumes and visiting the participating homes in their neighborhood, knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell. And when the homeowner answers, the children say trick or treat and then tells the homeowner a joke. I think that's the main difference here. The homeowner then hands out some candy. The children then move on to the next home and a good time is had by all. You can tell a house is participating in beggar's night if they have their front porch light on. Jokes are usually pretty innocent and along the lines of dad jokes, which I love. And sometimes kids like to make up their own jokes, much like my daughter did when she was a little younger. Here, here you go. You're going to love it. Why did the tree jump over the house? Because it had an eyeball machine. <laughs> I still don't get it either. I don't know. Number 10, Des Moines and Iowa have all four seasons in hyperdrive. For the most part, Des Moines has some pretty moderate temperatures in the spring. You may get mixed up with an occasional snowstorm in March or a pretty hot day in May, but Des Moines is usually pretty comfortable during this time of year. Between June and August, summer can bring some pretty hot and humid days. That said, there are usually ample ways to cool down. Whether you take a dip in Gray's Lake or go kayaking in the upcoming Des Moines River Project or visit the water park at Adventureland, there are plenty of outdoor activities in Des Moines. And again, step out for a ball game at Sec Taylor Stadium. I guess it's called Principal Park nowadays. But go watch those Iowa Cubs play some baseball. It's a really good time. Fall is pretty similar to spring as far as temperature goes. The leaves change to a beautiful variety of orange and red and yellow before they eventually fall to the ground. Pumpkin patches, apple orchards, hay rack rides, hunting, and football games are super popular this time of year. Now winter can be fairly moderate in December, but January and February, there can be a lot of snow and some really frigid temperatures. But depending on what you're looking for, there are plenty of things to do in the winter too. There are tons of nearby ponds for ice fishing, as well as some pretty cool places for sledding. Just be sure you dress for the occasion. And that was number 10, but we have a bonus for you. The bonus number 11. I don't want to brag, but I will for just a minute. Although not widely known as a tourist destination, Des Moines is a thriving, exciting, and growing city. The city regularly ranks at the top of a lot of best of lists. Here are just a few of the honors that Des Moines has received in recent years. Number two, safest place to live. Number one, best place to live in the Midwest for high salaries and low cost of living. That's a pretty good combo. Number five for best place to live in the US. Number one in Metro for millennials to buy homes. Number two in the top city for young home buyers. And that means young people buying homes, not buying young homes. Number three, most affordable place to live in the US. Number one in infrastructure. Number one in broadband access. Number three in healthcare. Number four in opportunity. Number five in education. And number nine in quality of life. I'll stop there, but I invite you to use your search engine to kind of uh, do a little Google search on Des Moines on your own. Des Moines is also an affordable place to visit. Hotels, rentals, and other accommodations are reasonably priced. Fuel is consistently lower than the nation's average, and there are plenty of affordable dining choices. That said, it is still wise to financially prepare yourself for a trip, so I'll include a link to one of my videos about how you can afford to travel. So from the city life to the country life and everything in between, Des Moines has so much to offer for a visit. But as an Iowan, I want to do the right thing and I want to be very honest with you. Once you visit Des Moines, you're not going to want to leave. So be sure to get the number of a realtor, something like that when you're in town. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me tell you all about my city. I hope you come visit. If you like this video, please subscribe. There are also some other videos that can tell you a little bit more about Iowa. And remember, die with memories, not dreams.